Hello, everyone, and welcome to Books, Branding, and Business with author Brandy Hunt. Today, my special guest is none other than the amazing Randy Jones. Thank you for being here today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me, Ms. Hunt. Absolutely. Um, me and Randy have known each other for probably seven or eight years now, saw each other in passing. Uh, we did a movie together, and he's going to tell you all about the good stuff he has going on. Um, so, Randy, just tell us, not all the good stuff, but just tell us a little bit about you, who you are. Do you have, um, you know, family where you are? You know, tell us all that good stuff. Okay. Well, my name is Randy Jones. Okay. I'm an independent filmmaker and an actor born and raised right here in Brooklyn, New York, Bever Stuyvesant, and a housing project called Sumner, Sumner Housing Project. Um, I was raised up with six people, with, you know, with both of my parents, now they, you know, no longer with us, you know, we won't, we won't be with the Lord. I had, um, there were six kids, six of us, okay? Now the father was one of my other brothers that recently, you know, passed on several years ago. Um, I'm doing film. I'm a filmmaker, like I said. I, I've done about six feature independent films that's been playing on my local TV station located here in New York and also worldwide online. And I just got a distribution deal with a new network by the name of UB TV, UBC TV, by Miss, um, by creator and owner Miss Peggy Dobson. What that? And I'm on a podcast as well. I have my own radio show, so I cut you off. My own radio show is called Sports and Entertainment with Dale and Randy. My buddy talks sports, and I talk entertainment. Okay, sometimes he talks entertainment with me, and I'm co-star of a new podcast, which our co-star friend, who you may know from the movie, Miss Christine White. I do, I do. Better known as Tina. I've been working with her over a year, and right now we're in our sixth season wow. and a hundred episodes, and it's going fantastical. Wonderful. Well, that is quite an impressive resume. Let me just say that. <laughs> um, but like I told him, I've known you for seven or eight years in passing. And what does that mean? Yes. That just You know how you see somebody online, you're like, hey, I know you. We worked on a movie set years ago. And today yes. when we came on, on set, we're like, I know you from somewhere. Yeah. And that's what I love about social media, where you can... Yes connect with people, the internet period. So social media, podcast, whatever the case may be. So I know the people did not remember that whole resume. So we're going to break it down just a little, little, little bit. So before we go to where you are now, tell us a little bit about how you got started back in the day. Like what led you to go into movies and, and become the man that you are today? Okay. You got time for a story? Can I have a little I, Yes, I got time for a story. All right, years ago, when I was a kid, right, coming up, I was living in a housing project, like I told you, in Bever Stuyvesant, okay, what they call Dua Da Best Da, okay, still lives like that today. It's more gentrification more. And um, I was hanging out with some friends of mine in the projects I grew up in called Sumner Housing Project, which is known to be the most notorious, gangsterous, thuggish, murderous, drug dealers, robbery neighborhood in all of Brooklyn, one of the most, okay? so. Um, back then, what we used to do, we used to call each, you know, we used to tattle tell each other, you know. And I yeah. hung out with some, of my, yeah, I hung out with some. Of them, right now, we call it snitching. But I used to hang out with some of my friends that was known to be more street thuggish than I was. I was just trying to be down like Brandy was, okay. Hey. One of my older, <laughs> yeah, exactly. One of my older brothers, who's no longer with us, you know, may rest in peace. Um, he was from the streets, you know, he was other streets. So what he did, he saw the kind of people I was hanging out with. And being that he was looking out, he was being a big brother looking for his little brother. He what he did, he kind of like tattletailed back then and told our mother the kind of people I was hanging out with. So my mother, you know, she was you know the big, big Christian woman she was, you know, singing on the you know on the, on the sing, you know singing on the on choir and everything. She looked at me, she was like, and I was mad at first. I said, listen, why don't you mind your business, bro? He's my friend. Leave me alone. So my mother said, listen, Randy. My mother said, listen, Randy. Why don't you pray and ask God to give you a talent? I said, Mom, I can't do nothing. Because notice, I was in the streets. I wasn't too much of the street, but I was leaving in that path. I wanted to be down with the dudes, you know, in my in my neighborhood. You know, I, I wanted to be what I see. I wanted to be a part of that crowd. 
Cause yeah. I glorified that. I thought that was like it, you know, you know, you know, you wilding out, you're, you know, you're, you're a drug dealer, or you're a gangster, you got guns, you know, you get your reputation, you know, all that nonsense that leaves nothing but death and in prison. And uh, and I thought I told my mother, since I can't do anything, mom, I don't know, I can't sing, I can't do nothing. Cause I thought talent means entertainment. She said, no, Randy, a talent can be anything. I said, okay, I'll tell you what, mom, you pray, then I pray. And she said, okay, so I remember this like it was yesterday, October 8, 1983, when New Edition first came out with Candy Girl. She was cooking collard greens for the family on a Thursday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I went to my room, I got on my knees and I prayed. I did what she taught me because I was raised up in church, you know, and I still go. And she taught me about, you know, we're praying. So when I went to sleep that night, she was one of those deep, fine, Holy Ghost, five hour praying, fasting you know, no water, no food type of women of God that mm -hmm. will pray and get a prayer through in 10 seconds. So I'm sure she prayed because I just did my prayer and, you know, and that was, I just did what she taught me. Mm -hmm. Well, the next day, something happened magical. I'm going to say magical. Well, you can say magical, but something happened. Like it, it felt like I was Pinocchio and I came to life. The next day I did something I never did. I started writing songs. Now, I never did that before I told my mother, you prayed, then I prayed. She said, okay. And I'm sure she prayed heavy. And I started writing songs. So I tried to be a singer. That wasn't working. I was just a big fan of New Edition, Jackson 5 and all them, Full Force, Force some D's and everything. And then my old friend of mine, which is a friend of mine now um, on Facebook, he asked me to get down with them in hip hop, you know, because back then everybody was joining, you know, was getting in groups. So I started rapping. And after I started rapping, I made a music video and I put my video on this thing, what we used to call back in the days in New York, Video Music Box, okay, by DJ Rock McDaniels. I did a make it or break it in 1989, okay? Well, eventually I didn't break it. I didn't make it back then. But as I did that, right, I looked at my song and I said, hmm, I can act. So one day we, a friend of mine's, uh, um, that's still a friend of mine today, we got together and we did like a little drug video, okay, like a little movie. Okay, an old friend of mine by the name of Robert Flood, which is still a good friend today from my old neighborhood. So when I looked at that, I said, hmm, I can really act. So what I did, I started going out on auditions. I mean, I kid you not, I auditioned for the copy show. I auditioned for um, TV um, for, um, TV commercials. I auditioned for this. I auditioned for that. And I was all happy and everything. I was thinking, okay, cool. You know, when I auditioned for the copy show, I was like, my goodness, that was the happiest. I felt like Michael Jackson. I think I'm going to get it because at that time, the copy show was like the black sitcom of the decade of that time, next to the Jeffersons and, you know, Red Fox and all that. Mm -hmm. And then a couple, of weeks, a couple of weeks went by or so, I got upset. I got frustrated because I didn't know too much about the business. I thought I was going to be one of these Disney kids. I was just going to lay back and everybody, you know, expect to get a handout. Right. Well, I come to find out in this hunt, I was dead wrong. I ain't getting no calls back. And I took the personal. So I said to myself, you know what? I feel like that treating me like the people in my neighborhood. That's not right. I said to myself, something rose up on the inside of me. It's like a God-given talent. He, you know, let me know. Hold on, son. You have something in you that you don't have to go outside, you know, and expect other people to give you a handout. So I said, you know what? I'm going to write my own stuff. I'm going to direct my own stuff. I'm going to film my own stuff. And I'm going to put people in the films that I'm doing just like myself, who's trying to come up and get out there. Then one day I'll be able to work with the big time Hollywood stars that I idolized and looked up to. And ever since then, that's what I did. I got a camera and I started videotaping and I started um, taping like the church sermons in the church I was going to. And I started videotaping, doing independent music videos for people. And then after that, I started doing my own films, my short films, and then I started um, doing improv. And I just been working my way up ever since today where I'm at and where I'm going. But it all happened, Brandy, with a prayer. My mama prayed for me. If she haven't prayed for me, she's in heaven now. If she haven't prayed for me, I'd be in jail or dead because that's the that's the area I was walking in and the gangster. Not being a gangster, but walking in that <laughs> path. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm glad, I thank God I didn't go that route because most of my friends had either died now or they locked up in prison. Wow. Shout out to all the praying mamas out there, including myself. Yes. Including we need my that mama. back. Um, you know, I think it's a common thread in the black community. Our mothers just, they, they fell on their knees and they say, you know what, maybe we didn't cross the finish line because of whatever was going on in society, but they started praying and they pray hard. I know my mama used to tell me, and it, it's not my turn to podcast, but let's just say my story was literally like, 
I was way away from the person that I am today. And I remember going to the clubs and, you know, wearing the short skirts and all of that stuff. And my mama would just look at me and be like, I'm praying for you. She never told me what the prayer was, but I guess it really didn't matter. She just knew that I had more in me than what I was exposing myself to. And so shout out to your mom for praying for you and shout out to the people who closed the door on you because you would have never been who you are if they had not closed the door. And I always tell people, I remember Jennifer Hudson. She's one of my favorite singers. Mm -hmm. If they had not shut the door on her on American Idol, we would have never had her as a dream girl. We would have never mm -hmm. had that experience. So they had to close the door in order for her to become much larger than the stage that they would have gave her. So at the mm -hmm. end of the day, I think I heard you say 1983 is when you kind of started looking for that purpose, looking for your drive, looking for my place in life. So if you're young, you're like, something. how old are you? I was 13. I'm 52 now. Right. Wow. Well, so that's yeah. a lot. You know, people, I think about Noah. Noah had one message, get on the boat. <laughs> And he, mm -hmm. and that's the only message he preached. People be out here trying to change their message all the time. Well, my purpose mm -hmm. on Monday is this. And my purpose on Tuesday is that, you know what, as a writer myself, I used to write movies and plays and mm -hmm. God changed it. And now I write books, but guess what? Those movies and plays, those they're in those books. They'll be back out in movies and plays one day. So, well, so I'm going to be in there still to be a messenger and to write and to get the word out about all kinds of stories. So what kind of stories do you tell? Like I, your life story sounds like an amazing movie. Is that a story? Is that a movie yet? No, but that's something in perhaps in the plan down the road to do. Good. <laughs> um, the kind of stories I do, I do a lot of dramedy. I'm an action person. I do right. drama. Well, and wait a minute, I'm wait a minute, wait a minute. You got to roll us back. For the people who don't know what the genres are, what is a dramedy? I could probably guess that it's dramatic and funny at the same time, but what is it exactly. in your industry? A dramedy is like drama mixed with comedy. I love it. That's what it is. I'm, I'm, I'm entertaining you, but at the same time, I want to make you laugh. Right. That's what a dramedy, that's what they call it. Love dramedy it. mixed with comedy. I that's love what it. a dramedy means. So how did you, did you pick that genre or was that just something that your passion just led you to? So when you started doing the music videos and then you started doing the movies and I love how you say you just grabbed your camera because a lot of people, and especially in this generation, want everything. Like I want to have all this stuff before I get started. Man, I had a pen. That's all I had as my tool and a piece of paper. And I had to start writing books, well, a computer. Um, but we start with a blank canvas. And so you picked up a camera and you say, you know what? I'll learn along the way. That literally is the same way I started writing books. After what did I God tell Moses? I, say again. What did, sorry, sorry, Couture. What did God tell Moses? What's it again? again? <laughs> yes. Use what What's I've given you. Okay? That shepherd said, that's the most famous stick on the planet Earth. Absolutely. Use what I gave you. So whatever God gave you, use it. Absolutely. And I remember after I wrote my book, I was looking for a publisher and no one would take my book. And it wasn't because it was bad. They would say stuff like, oh, we're not accepting that genre or, oh, we're not accepting authors until next year. And it was like August, July, August when I was putting And I was like, so I got to wait until my dream can be realized. And I heard God say, do it yourself. I don't even know how. <laughs> and now eight years later, I am the how. Somebody wow. go ahead and preach. I am the how. Like everybody comes to me because after I published my book, then it was like, okay, how do I do this? How do I do that? Did that happen to you? Like after you started learning the industry and learning the business. And I like how you said, I took people who were like me and put them in the movies because face it, Hollywood is not calling all of us, but because of people like us, we have given people opportunities that they never would have had. And we bring the dramedy. We're the best actors in the world. Right, <laughs> right. But yeah, everything you said, Miss Hunt, is true. Um, when I first started all this with the business, I didn't know anything about the business. I didn't really, you, you're talking to a man who's a, who's a novice. I didn't go to no university. I, I didn't have none of that. All I had was the anointing of God he gave me. Like I'm Maybe. doing comic books right now. 
Okay. I never was into comic books when I was a kid. The brother I told you about that was that, that told of me when I was younger, they got me where I met. He was the one that was into comic books. I was into cartoons. And I'm doing a movie right now uh, based upon a comic book. It's almost like a black a Black Panther type of film. It's called The Unstoppables. We'll get into that in a few minutes. I love but it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, I didn't have no experience with this. Okay. What I did, I did a lot of background, you know, extras in the films and stuff like that. And what I would do, I would watch and observe the camera people and how they do things. And there's times, because you know I'm in New York City. This is the second Hollywood. You know, there's times they film it everywhere. And when I'm not working on a set, I may be walking by, I may be at work or leaving or going on lunch break or going home from work, coming in, you know, early in the morning, I have enough time before I start. I would sit down and watch the director. I watch the camera piece. I watch everybody. I would go to libraries. I would get books and I would read it. And now when the internet came, I would look online and see how things are done. So all that education was like my influencing, okay? I learned all that. And as I learned all that, you know, I became the master that they wanted to go to school for to get in order to be at a degree to get that job. That is so awesome. And your story is just like, do you watch Tyler Perry, Sisters? Oh, yeah. I love the, people. Uh, me I think as her name is Perry. Crystal. Um, I her, I think her name is Crystal. The 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 one that plays the girlfriend of Zach. Mm -hmm. I can't remember her last name is, but she said that she wanted to be an actress, but when she did when she got the uh, job with Tyler Perry, she actually was the fashion coordinator. She wasn't even acting. And she says she started doing exactly what you said. She started paying attention to the actresses. She started picking up on what Tyler Perry liked and what he didn't like because she was his fashion mm -hmm. coordinator. So she understood like the professionalism. She understood about timeliness. She says she waited three years and somebody said to Tyler Perry, oh, she wants to act because she never said anything. And he walked over to her. He was like, you want to be in one of the shows? Like you want to try out? And she was like, sure. And that's how she came to be. Uh, and she's one of the best actresses on there. We I'm love her. Hoping, I hope Tyler Perry watched his show because I've been trying to reach out to this brother. And I would say he's real busy and everything. I send emails. I'm trying my best to get to that level. So I'm hoping that Mr. Perry will see me and say, hey, I, I did opportunity. I would love to play. A, I mean, come, you could put me in a Medea play and have Joe smack me in the head all day. I don't mind. Right. <laughs> you know, but I would love to. I but love yeah, every, everything you see me doing, I didn't, let me tell you, I started in music. My mom wasn't trying to be an actor. I wasn't trying to be an actor at first. Right. Okay, I want to be a singer. I'm thinking maybe the next Barry White or Michael Jackson or something like that, you know, or Prince or maybe. I right. want to with the Blandros or Freddie Jackson. I wanted to be a singer. I wanted to be a music guy. Acting wasn't on my mind. I, you know, oh, oh, everything I'm doing now, writing, directing, I thought I'd never, I would never be able to do that because I was always told as a kid coming up that, you know, I was like, I, I would never, I would never get nowhere. I was stupid. I was this, I was that. And right. I let the influence, that negative vibe come in me. But thank God for the praying mother. Let me know. No, son. You're not like that, God said. No, you have greater purpose in you. Right. And he showed the greater purpose out of me. You see, see, God has a way of showing people, listen, what you think less of yourself, it's not like that. Steven right. Spielberg, when he started his films, nobody didn't want him. Right. Nobody. Nobody yeah. didn't want Steven Spielberg. Nobody. George Lucas, I believe it was, from Star Wars, picked him up. And ever since then, he became the top priority in filmmaking. I mean, that's like, to me, I never knew that. Yeah, he wasn't. And Daniel, as a matter of fact, the guy who did, um, what's his name? Um, Stephen King. Okay, he started writing his books, right? And he was you know, like, like yourself, with the publisher. Nobody didn't want to publish. Nobody didn't want him to, um, you know, get his book published. So what happened? He threw his book in the garbage, forgot about it. Wow. Didn't want, you know, like, gave it up. His wife went in the garbage, got the book out, sent it to a publisher, and Stephen King became who he is now. From books what? to films. I never yeah, did that. I don't, Thank yeah, you. Thank you for sharing that. Look at that. Matter of fact, I'm getting a great example. The two sister sisters, right? I read about Tia and Tamara, another yes, woman. I love them. Garden. Yeah, I don't even heard their story. They went for an audition for something and they didn't make the audition. When they were walking out the studio, a woman said, hold on, wait up. I have an idea for a show for two sisters. And ever since then, they became what they became. So everything happened for a reason. 
Yes. Okay. Everything. Now I was just trying know, to figure so. out what I would call this, you know, our episode and the words failure is not final comes to mind because mm -hmm. that is literally like our walking testimony. Most of the closed doors, I like much like Jennifer Hudson, you know, she tried really hard. She was good. You know, people were voting for her much like yourself. You were qualified, but if God didn't call you to that, if he didn't choose you to go that route, he will close every single door until you go the route willingly or unwillingly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's going to put yes. you on the right path, which is exactly. why my company is called On the Right Track. That's my publishing company is On the Right Track, because for so long, I thought I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Let we me get on the right track. Mm -hmm. We have to talk. You said you got a publishing, publishing company. I got my next comic book I'm doing. Good. We have to talk. We'll talk yes. after this. It's, Absolutely. It's so. Yes often we feel like we're not where we're supposed to be, but there's a scripture that says the steps of a righteous man or woman is ordered by the Lord. That means that my wrong steps, my right steps, and it says all things shall work together for the good of those that love the Lord and are called yes. according to his purpose. And while we're not perfect, our parents' prayers is everything working together because they prayed the same prayer and yes. their parents prayed, prayed the same prayer. So the yes. things working together for our good, we are the answer to our parents' prayers. I know my mama thanks God every day that I'm still not running in the streets. Um, yes. you know, I, I had a daughter when I was 20 uh, and I'm 42 now. And I look back and I'm like, sheesh, how, I don't know how we made it over. But you like 19. Said, our <laughs> mother, thank yes, you. Thank you. Like, I'm 30, like I'm 31 or something. Like you look like, right. You know, they say the black good don't black don't crack. Don't crack. <laughs> yes, the right. Good, only the good black, though. Um, yes. So let's talk about how you decided to come to do the podcast with Christine. And if I want to say it's Kicking It With Tina. Yes, it's called Kicking It With Tina. Now, this is incredible. I found Christine, I would call her Tina, on Facebook, just like I found you. I was like, because I was in the midst of promoting my films, you know, my superhero films, like I said, we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. And I was just, you know, on Facebook, like, you know, normal, just, you know, browsing through. And I was looking to do more podcasts and interviews like I'm doing with you. And I came across her um, podcast. I said, oh, okay, mm, let me contact her. Her and I started talking and we started communicating. And ever since then, from that point forth, um, she did an interview with me and I did an interview with her on my show as well. And then as we started talking, we started building up a friendship relationship. Mm -hmm. And then as a result of that, she said, hey, I have an idea. I said, yeah, what? She said, listen, what do we do? Because we both are comical. She said, I'm funny all the time. I don't think I am. But she said, listen, why don't we do skits? Like Kicking the Routine Podcast skits. I said, I'm game. I don't mind. Hey, let's do that. So she came up with the idea because it's all her idea. And, and um, what we do, we talk about different topics, uh, different things, and we do like 15, 20 minutes of skits and started communicating. So that's how I met with Tina. I met with her by looking, um, you know, looking for um, different, you know, um, podcasters to be interviewed. Like the Bible said, seek you should find. I was seeking, I found her. See, so that's how Absolutely. her and I met her. And we just, yes. we just so, connected like Wakanda forever. Right. And tomorrow, next <laughs> month would be a year She's been doing the podcast and wow. she's almost up to like, I don't know how many. She's almost probably close to a hundred thousand to a million. Really? Yeah. Shout out to Christine. And, Is yeah, it Christine we White? Try to get, we're going to get her on. I was telling her about getting on the show. Now, yeah. I, I, I was telling her to try to get you, you know, we do an interview with her. With you Absolutely. and her. So, yes, definitely. Yeah. So it's Christine White? Yeah. Christine is kicking it with Tina. Kicking it with okay. Tina. Okay. You're kicking it with Tina. Just go, you go to my page and you look at Christine Wright, kicking it with Tina. Well, I'm going to let you plug all the places they can find you when we get to the end. And yes. so, like I, I like what you said, me. though, <laughs> about, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, of kingdom of God, in some translation. And all this righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God of, and all righteousness. And all you things should be added unto you. Matthew 6 33. Right. I'll repeat it again in full so people can hear you. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Absolutely. 
See, at the end of the day, this generation has us seeking the things and then yeah. going, God, will you bless my thing? And God's like, no, seek me and I'll tell you what things to be concerned about because some of the stuff that we get in our hand, relationships, jobs, um, you know, things that we think is our purpose, God be like, I did not tell you to do that. But since you got it in your hand, I'm going I'm to make it work out for your good. But most of that is lessons. Most of the time we grab something that we weren't supposed to grab. God say, well, I'm not going to let this season go to waste. I'm going to use it to teach you something. And then I'm going to get you back on the right track. And mm. What happened with you and between you and Tina, it reminds me of the story between Mary and I believe it was Mary. It could be Mary and Mary, but maybe you could tell me, but it was, um, no, excuse me. It was John and Jesus's mother when their babies leaked. It's when they met each other, they were both pregnant. One was pregnant with John and one was pregnant with Jesus. And when they got in the uh, midst of each other, they was like, oh, my baby's leaping. And John is the one that baptized Jesus. So even in the womb, their purposes were connecting like, hey, I'm going to see you on the other side. And I think that's how, just like you said, you know what, we got to connect. It's something that you have that I need. There's something that I have that you need. Same thing that happened with you and Tina. And I think this happens every day all around the world. And we don't have, I can't meet everybody. I can't meet Can billions and billions of people. Can I say something? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Earlier when you spoke to me, I thought, I, I didn't hear you, but I, when you say, hey, can you hear me? Were you doing the sound check? You sounded just like her, and you sound like her, you kind of act like her. So it's almost a similarity, what I'm looking at, when I'm looking at you. I can see that. I can see that. And it's funny because I haven't seen her in years, but even when I met her in person, I thought, we could be sisters, even Sheree. Like, they were, um, and I hate, we live in the same state, but they live on the other side of the state. But you know, I love the the cast. I love working with y'all. And I, and that time when I had just first started acting, I was still kind of getting the bugs and stuff out. And so it's people like Sheree, Christine, mm -hmm. yourself um, in that industry that give people who are real timid. You know, we, we try to walk on a Hollywood stage. They're going to be like, out of here, <laughs> you know, since send a professional. So you're, you remind me, you know, you're training professionals. I was looking at a picture of a workshop I did for authors like five years ago, and it was like 25 people in the room, and I had them sign on a um, a frame of, it says, future published author, and mm -hmm. at least 15 people from that room are now published authors. So wow. we're, we're, we're bringing people to their vision. We, not, we may not be the end, but we're the bridge. We may not be, um, you know, the end all be all for everybody. I'm not a Simon and Schuster yet. I'm not Penguin House yet, but you know, they publish people like TD Jakes and stuff like that. But one, but, but there's so many local people who would have never got the chance just because of a gender, a race, a, a time frame, all of those things. So I just, I, I had to sit back and say, God, thank you for my publishing company, for my ability to uh, bring people to their vision and beyond and, and, and become motivational speakers, become coaches, become, you know, whatever storytellers that they never thought they would be able to do it. And so it sounds like you're, um, you know, on the same path. Like, do mm -hmm. you do mentoring? Do you help, um, other directors, like people who are coming into the industry, do you have classes where you teach what you do? Well, I don't have classes. Okay, if I'm not that level, it's not time for that. If the Lord leaves me, I, I'm not going to do things out of season. Okay? Um, but anybody that would come on my path that the Lord would bring me or I bring me in their path, if they need any introduction, any instruction or anything, I'm more than welcome to talk to tell them. So I do tell some people certain things hey, what they need to do. On the job training. I love it. Especially in your yeah. industry, you know, putting uh, just like you went and grabbed a camera. I'm pretty sure you tell your, your mentees the same thing. Bring your camera, bring your whatever. You know where I started in the acting industry? Where? As, a, as a producer's assistant. I wasn't even in front of the camera. Um, I I, <laughs> just like yourself. I really wanted to be behind the camera, write the movies, direct, and things like that. But I knew I needed to be in the movies in order to understand like character development yes. and stuff. And I remember when I lived in Atlanta, um, there was a call for a producer's assistant. I had never done it before, 
but I know mm -hmm. how to serve. I've been a mom. I know how to run errands and mm -hmm. I, I applied for it and I got it. And I like just being on the set was amazing. And he was a, a local uh, director like yourself. They, they've gone on to publish some very big things. And I just remember I started what I would have considered small, but I loved it. I love, um, you know, meeting, they had, um, very high paid actresses and actors in their stuff. And I'm sitting there like, I'm just a little girl, you know, from Greenville, South Carolina. And I remember saying that, like, I'm just getting started. And this man looked at me and he said, don't tell anybody that anymore. <laughs> I said, <laughs> he said, he said, because I've seen you and you're really good at what you do. They let me like do soft reads and stuff um, when actors weren't weren't there. And he was like, you're really good. He was like, and because this is Atlanta, just already say you're an actress. Cause I, oh, I said I was an expiring actress. And he was yeah. like, no, just say you're an actress. He said, I've seen you and you're, and, and just little things like that was yeah. the bridge, you know, to get me to the other side. Yes. So is there any other thing that we did not talk about that you wanted to talk about? Well, yeah, with a couple of things. Well, yeah, um, getting back to working with Tina. Also, she's um, in talks right now. I have a sitcom I did, right? It's called Can Life Get Any Worse Than This? And I'm in the process of reshooting and redoing, remaking the um, the comedy for the network, okay? We got a couple of episodes already. And I was speaking with Tina about it. And sh so far, she's pretty much in the... Um, you know, pretty much up and in the process of being the next co-star for me. I'm speaking with a writer right now based out in New York, you know, someone pretty big that's coming up and that's going to be writing some episodes. And plus I have another writer as well in Pennsylvania. So um, you, there is a possibility you're going to see more of myself and Tina, Christine White. And also there's an idea I have for her for a comedy sitcom for her alone. So in the next maybe three years, she's going to have her own little sitcom. It's all, you know, it all goes well. Love, okay? it, love it. I'll have to get her on the show as well. Yes. Oh, most definitely. You're going to have, you said one hour, you're going to have you're probably gonna need two hours. Cause <laughs> right, because I know we can talk. Exactly. But yeah, like I said, I got a movie I'm working on. It's an independent film. It's a superhero movie. The name of the movie is called The Unstoppables. Okay? Mm. It's a black superhero film. I got a lot of cast of newcomers coming up and um that's working with me and stuff, you know, by the name of you know, you remember six names? Oh no, go ahead. My cast members I'm working with by the name of you know Anthony Rosa Jr. He plays one of the villains. Um jo um Hyrule Josiah, another villain, Diana Lopez, they play the evil doers. Um Carissa Jones, um just to name a few. Um and do they get a special superhero outfit? Because if they do, I'm coming too. Yes, yes. Mr. Yeah. Dale Smith. Miss Corinda Actress, Zach Buenas, um, so, um, Regine Raymond, just to name a few that's going to be working with me was in the movie, okay? Wonderful. So we're working on this movie right now, and um, it's an action film um, created, written, directed, created by myself and assistant producer, Mr. Dorian Knighton, who's working with me as well with this. And uh, we've been working for uh, like a number of years on and off. You know, with the pandemic, we have to shut down. Everything is coming back. And so I'm hoping by 2023 this year, we'll be completely done. Because after this movie, I got a movie a movie I want to do that's basically about women called I Don't Need a Man to Make Me Happy. Oh. So <laughs> I, will be there. I will be present for the foolishness. <laughs> by, September, by September, I'm looking to start casting for that oh, role. September is my more. birthday. Okay, hey, hey, happy birthday early. Yeah, well, thank you. We, you know, Virgos, we celebrate all year, so that's fine. September, September what? 15th. Oh, okay. My my father, he was September 2nd. One of my brothers, September 3rd. Another brother, he's 9 11. So, oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> so you got, you got plenty of intellects hanging around you, bothering you every day, I'm sure. <laughs> well, they used to, not no more. I'm, I'm, I'm more of a bachelor now. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, I need <laughs> just so that we can make sure that we talked about everything across the board. Um, what now we've been preaching already, but just specifically, if you had to give a business owner advice, you know, just getting started, what three things would you tell a newcomer to either your industry, the acting um industry, being a director, or just the business industry as a whole? What three things I would tell them? Yes. Okay. Know what you're getting into. 
Yes. Know what you want and be open to listen to advice from others who who's either, either been there or um still there. Wonderful. I love that. And, and I, as I put four, I say first and more, more, first and more, don't forget God. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you're going to need it to deal with people and yourself and your frustration about the visions that are inside of you that can't, it's, it's yeah. like it's in there. You're trying to get it out. Jesus, please help me. Um, yeah. And I don't know if you do um, branding. So this is totally, we didn't talk about this, but if you were giving branding and marketing advice, you know, what has seemed to work for you and your company? Like what kind of, I know what works because I see you online all the time, but that may just be how authentic you are. But what do you think some of the key pieces to branding and marketing is? Be original, be yourself, yeah. be creative, do you, do your own thing. Okay. Yeah, Don't absolutely. expect a handout, especially if you're a black person in this business. Okay. Be creative and yeah. put your stuff out there. Okay, yes. you got all kinds of social media. You got social medias we didn't even hear about. Just Google um, different types of social medias. Put your stuff out there. Put it out there in the open and expose yourself. Okay, put your thing, market yourself. Before you can get a marketer, be the marketer yourself. Expose yourself. Things are different. Okay, Absolutely. so that's the advice I would give them. And one more question, this came to mind, you know, starts popping off. What if they're afraid, Randy? You say expose myself in this huge world of so many judgmental people. I don't want to expose myself. What would you say to that person? Well, I'm going to say, like I heard um, this very anointed, famous preacher by the name of Joyce Meyer say, if you're afraid, do it afraid. Absolutely. Do it, do afraid. it afraid. Take a step, Take a leap of faith. Do it. Like Nike, just do it. They did it. They created Nike at a time of recession, like we are now. And look where they're at now. Just do it afraid. That's all. Absolutely. What can hurt? Okay. And that is the key point is it's gonna be a it, it's gonna be fearful. It's going to be somebody's gonna say, Oh, that you're the worst. Somebody's gonna say, Why are you doing it? Because everybody else is doing it. Um, you're going to get backlash. So just go ahead and prepare yourself to not respond to it. I think a lot of times, especially in this, in um, this, the industry of movies, books, where people literally like picking you apart about little things, it can really become like a thing, but you have to learn how to ignore it. And I always ask people, like somebody told me they didn't like TikTok. And I said, <laughs> What would you do if you knew doing one video would bring you $5,000? That was like, oh, I would have already done it. Of course, because once we assign value to something, we we stick with it. Now, everybody's value is different. For me, I don't make $5,000 on TikTok, but I have a message to give. And so I'm on there giving God's message, encouraging people. That is the value for me. If the dollars come with it, great. But at the end of the day, if you assign fear as the value and that's what you're getting out of it, well, I'm afraid somebody's going to say something. I'm afraid people are going to talk about me. Then that's the value that you've assigned to it. So you have to remove that because judgment is everywhere. I can be at home minding my own business and hear people talking about me <laughs> for nothing. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, let the people talk and let God had uh pave your way so that he says he's gonna he's gonna support you god is gonna be the one to send people god is the one that says hey mrs brandy and tell her you want to be on a podcast <laughs> you know hey mrs christine what you say is so powerful um miss hunt you say it's so powerful but i gotta say something on this you might as speak oh absolutely you know, no, go ahead. i'm uh, i gotta correct you on this in a way i would say correct you i just gotta throw this in Absolutely. We say well, God this and God that. We speak in a spiritual format because that's the area we're in. But right. everybody may not be like that. Everybody that may may not be on the spiritual level we are. Everybody not be you know you may be you may talk to some people who are atheists, people that don't know Jesus, people that don't know, and they say, well, I don't believe all that God said. I don't believe it. So my word to them is this: still do it afraid. Okay, <laughs> take a chance. Right. What you would say you feel in your gut, take a chance. Okay. Still do it afraid. Just do it. 
It's like you talk about, yeah, I'm going to do this tomorrow. I'm going to do that tomorrow. You don't know you're going to wake up tomorrow. You don't right. know before you leave, somebody's going to shoot you in the head. But you take right. a leap of faith. Just do it afraid. Just do it. Right. You know, what you said was good. I had to throw that out there because no, you right. are listening to you. It's not all, you know, it's not all, you know, hallelujah, not all Christians. Right. You're not, you, know, you got people that listen to you. It's not Christian. So it's like we got to know how to, you know, the Bible said I became all things to all men, so I may win some. That means that if you're an atheist, then Jesus is going to come to you in, in, in he's going to come to you as a man of God, but in the atheist aspect that's going to tell you, you need to come here. If you're a Muslim, he's going to come to you as a man of God, but he's going to come to you in the Muslim aspect that tell you, you need to come here. So in other words, when you, you know, when you said, when we talk about, you know, you know, you know, um, God this and God that God, and it's good. I'm not saying I'm talking, but we got to re realize the atmosphere we in, okay, that everybody's not going to relate it. So for those, like the Bible said, those who have, those who have an ear, let them hear, let them hear what the Spirit of God has got to say. So when we speak the spiritual sense, people who are spiritual, this is for you, okay? Now, when we speak the non-spiritual sense, people that don't believe and all that stuff, then that one is for you. So you understand what I'm and saying, then, right? Yep. And, I, and to add to that, I want to say um, for people who may be listening who don't have a religion or they don't have a God. Um, I, I often believe, well, I've heard that said, you know, I'm God, which is fine. So my question to you would be, if you're God, then why don't you trust yourself? <laughs> if you are Ooh, God. that was powerful. Ooh, you hit me in the I never even heard that before. Ooh. Because I'm okay with that. I'm okay with you saying that there ain't one and there ain't going to be one. But then that means you all responsible. You 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 you're solely responsible for yourself, your breath, your breathing, your protection. Then we must dig into ourselves and say, self, why am I holding myself back? If I'm not waiting on a God and I'm waiting on myself, why am I holding myself back? Go ahead. What you said was true, but I gotta say, if you say or how people say, listen, I'm a God, I'm God. Okay, and you say, yeah, God, why can't you trust in yourself? As God, he trusted in himself because there was no one higher, no one greater. Right. The reason why they can't trust in themselves, Miss Hunt, you know why? Because they're not, they're not on that level as God. They just say, I'm God, I'm this, but ignorantly, they don't even know what that means. Right. On the spiritual sense. Well, you, you know, know this, this platform, this platform is, is to encourage Yes. Uh, this platform is to enlighten and not to cast down anyone's imaginations because we're exactly. all someone. We, we talked about how our, our mothers prayed for us. Somebody yeah. might be listening to this, be like, my mama didn't pray nothing for me, you know. So I don't ever want anyone to think they were left out because we didn't no. say a we didn't say a specific thing or we didn't go a specific route. But everyone is here to be encouraged. So my question is, if you're listening to this and you do believe you're God and you also believe you're afraid, why aren't you trusting yourself? We can't answer that for anyone. They have to say, OK, well, the re real reason I don't trust myself is because and they get to fill in the because because there could be a lot. Of, I wrote a book called Dealing with the Hand I Was Dealt. I was raised in church ever since I was a newborn baby in my mama's womb because she played the piano. So my brokenness didn't have anything to do with a lack of God or a lack of church. It was a lack of me digging within myself saying, why do I keep making these same decisions? Why do I keep dating these same people? Why does this still hurt? So when I say whether you su subscribe to a God or not, at the end of the day, the Bible does say that there is a God that lives inside of us. Now, that's just the book I like to read, just the book I like to read. But then I hear people say, well, we're all gods. That's the same thing. The Bible does say that we are little G's. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so when I hear non-biblical readers say we're all gods, we're all saying the same thing, which is fine. So that brings me to the point of, if we are God, and I have to ask myself this all the time, God literally means that I am the orchestrator of, I'm the CEO of my life. There's mm. also free will. God could tell you to move to Alaska tomorrow. Maybe you didn't hear him, but you got all the signs of Alaska and you go, I really like to be in California. Free will says go to California. 
because God gives us free will, whatever God, Abba, Buddha, all of them, I've read lots of books. They all say, yes, there is a way that is right to a man. Excuse me. There's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, God will prevail. Now, if I take God out and put Brandy will prevail, I don't want that much responsibility personally. <laughs> I, I, I would like to believe that I didn't make my life up and I'm just out here mm -hmm. winging it, but that's just me. So I, I want this to be heard as these are options. These, this is, these are options for you to discover your own path, it, whether it's books, branding, business, movies, being a doctor, whatever your path is, make sure that you're just not out there throwing darts and be like, huh, that sounds good. Listen to the God in you. There's a mm -hmm. God in there somewhere. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. All of the books say the same thing. They just mm -hmm. read differently. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but go ahead. Okay, I'm, I'm listening to you. I'm going to say this. I'm thinking, I'm listening to what you're saying. I'm hearing what you're saying, perceiving what you're saying. And even earlier on when we were talking, and I've done several podcasts, I've done several, and this is the most, how can I put it? Give it to me, Lord. Profound podcast I've ever had uh, in a good way. You know why? Because this is like on a spiritual level. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't thinking we was going to get deep. We was going to get, how can I, I'm saying like, I didn't think we was going to have Bible study. And, and, and at the same time. I can't no, help it. It's okay. It's good. It's good. Cause like the Bible said, I became all things to all men. So I may win some. You never That's know. Right. Somebody be watching the podcast. Be on the edge of killing themselves. I remember a long time ago, I was on a train in New York City and I was reading my Bible. And this guy sat next to me and he said, Yeah, can you pray for me? I said, Yeah. I said, Sure, okay. He said, Yeah, I was about to kill myself. I oh. said, what? See? And I prayed for the brother. And right. I just believe God, you know, he's, you know, he got to live it. Okay, so we don't know who's watching, but I'm saying everything was divine by God. This was a setup. When I contact you, similar like what I meant with Tina, God always has a way of doing a bigger picture. We think one thing, God saying, no, I'm going to do another. You told me you're a book publisher. Okay, I was praying to God about a book publisher. Okay, now it's like, okay, you found one. Okay, um, I was just thinking, you're just going to ask me some questions, and you have. You know, I'm going to get into the film, and I have. You know, but we started, it's like the Lord started, the Holy Spirit started going in a different direction right. through us, and we just started vibing. So this is all ordained by God. We met through the movies years ago. I forgot all about it. I saw you right. on Facebook numerous of times, and then you posted that ad like I met with Tina, okay? And I said, okay, bam, I contact you. And like the Bible says, seek me, you find. I said, listen, let's do this. Okay, she said, when? It was last week, now we're doing it this week. So everything is orchestrated by God. It is. Everything, Absolutely. everything, like everything. We haven't did a movie in like what, six or eight years. I think when I met you, I was 47 years old or 45. And now look, I'm 5'2, you know? And it's like everything is or everything's ordained by God. So Absolutely. whenever God does something like this, I always say God was next. Like right. I was in a situation one time. I say, Lord, I need a chair in my house. I have chairs. I need a chair. My Lord, my chair is breaking down. When I was coming, coming in, the Lord showed me a chair. And, and this guy that worked in my building, he gave me one, a nice one. Free, free of charge. You know, that's just a little crazy for a little test of what God do. So it, 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 every time, every time he 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 will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory, not our own. By Christ Jesus. So I thank God for this interview. And I didn't mean to get deepifying and all that, but you know, like I said, I feel like a Bible study. And I have no problem. But I know it's way fine. God, is God used the industry. This is what God's gonna do. God is using the industry in Hollywood to bring the souls to Hollywood. Right. So that's what he's doing. Okay? It's like a Bible track. You give a Bible track to people in the street. Let's say you make that Bible track like a nightclub Bible track. And say, well, what's this? Oh, man, is this a church? Where are you going to have this? I'm going to go to it. Because the sin that they're looking at is, oh, I never saw no Bible track like this. So let me go check this out. When they come inside the sanctuary, the Spirit of God moves rapidly and get their and get them. Right. First, he got their attention. Now they come inside the sanctuary. Now he got their heart. And as he got their heart, 
He's going to draw them to him. As he draws them to him, they're going to open up and confess the sinner's prayer, and they're going to receive him as we have received him. So this is what God is doing. This is like a Bible track. Okay? Amen. I, new, I, I believe new, that. We are the new Taliperis rising up. Okay? I, so I, I receive doing. that. And that's well, all the opening up in Hollywood that God is doing. Amen. I believe that this is a new season, not just because we just started January off, but like literally my life transition overnight. But to your, the, one of your tips that you gave for branding and marketing was to be authentic and to be yourself. You will not get me without getting business, books, brandy and the bible that is not what the podcast is called but i might need to change it but at the end of the day i but but i would never tell somebody that they're not welcome because of mm -hmm. anything um no, no, no. you would have to know me off camera and off podcast to know how welcoming of a person i am and i want other people to be the same way i i literally cringe when i hear somebody go oh you don't believe in god then you're going to hell. I can't, how can you, you don't have a heaven or a hell to put nobody in. Um, and so, you know, just to that point, yes, I, I agree. We, there are sent ones who will go out into the marketplace and still preach the gospel. And that is us. There are people who are going to listen, who may have already turned it off already. Like, I don't want to hear that. And that's okay. Because it, at the end of the day, the piece that you heard was the piece that you needed, but it's always going to be in the uh, loop of this podcast. And one day that seed is going to take root and you're going to come back and go, Randy and Brandy, we're not starting no podcasts that to together, Randy, just because our name's Matt and um, Ryan. No, we're not going to do it. I hear you. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm not listening though, <laughs> but we are about to wrap up. Can, that hour always like Zoom. May I ask a question? Yes. How long, first of all, how long you been doing the interview? How long have you been doing the podcast like this? I have been doing these probably on and off for about three years, maybe four. Okay. I have my own television show too. Oh, okay. So this is gonna be on TV or your television show, right? This is well, I don't have the the television show was uh called Journey to Success, and it okay. was like two years ago. Um, but the author interviews and business owners, I've been doing that for about two to three years on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. Um, but I had literally just started uploading some old conversations that I had onto iHeart I and stuff like that. So you'll actually be one of the newest ones that I put up because everything else was just via YouTube, Facebook and stuff like that. Well, let me ask you, may I ask you this? Um, have this ever, have this been like the first, I would say intensity interview in a, such in a way that we spoke so much about God that you ever done or have you have done in a while? Yes, that I've done in a while. Um, some people are afraid um to talk openly, but like I said, if you get me, you're gonna I'm gonna tell you about the goodness of the God I know. You can tell me about the goodness of the God you know, and we'll come together and have a Holy Ghost good party. Um, because at the end of the day, we get one life. And however you got through that life, and when you get to the end, if your God says, Well done, get a faithful servant come on over where the land is plenty, then amen. If it don't, that that I have no problem with what you want to do with your life as long as our purposes align and we get to where we got to go. Okay, well, this is God ordained, I'm going to say. Okay, and there's still some people, I mean, I'm going to let you close out, but there's still some people I like to mention <laughs> that, you know, that's, that's working with me. They've been working with me for a long time and they're in my movies that right now that God is elevating, about to take like, on a level, on a platform like a Netflix or Hulu in that in that arena. So, I mean, you go ahead, and continue. You know, when the time goes right, I'll give everybody my information, everybody my information as you permit me. And um, I definitely like to say a couple of names and you know people sure. that I like Absolutely. to be honest with. Well, today we have been with none other than the illustrious Randy Jones out of Brooklyn, New York. He is a everything. <laughs> He is a director. He's a movie director, a movie producer. I'll let him run his resume again. But today we have talked about books, business, branding, and the faith that it takes to look at failure in the face and go, maybe I failed at that, but I ain't no failure. 
Maybe I failed at that. And that was just a life lesson. And so we talked about failure and how we got up, dusted ourselves off and jumped back in the race. We talked about how we are a bridge now for others, just like people were a bridge for us. And so hopefully you have enjoyed our interaction. Hopefully there is no offense, but if there is, please know that I love you. Randy loves you. It's the Brandy and Randy show today. Yes. <laughs> um, and you just let, you, um, you let the people know how they can contact you, how they can stay in contact with your movies, you know, all the things. And then we're going to roll it on out of here. Okay. Well, first of all, I'd like to say, um, Ms. Hunt, thank you so much for this opportunity. I thank God for you. I didn't expect to preach. I didn't expect to go on this route, but, you know, let God have his way. Okay. And thank you for this opportunity. And I'm really am happy to actually get to meet with you personally mm -hmm. since the movies we did. Yes, well, um, people can reach me at Randy Jones Business at yahoo.com. You can reach me at Acton, take one, A C T, um, T A K E, one, the number one, at yahoo.com. You can also catch me on my, excuse me, my website, www.randyjonesproductions.com. That's www.randyjonesproductions.com. Okay, you can catch me on YouTube. Um, YouTube.com, you know, Randy Jones Films. That's YouTube.com slash Randy Jones Films. And I just wanted to say hello to everybody, give a, you know, a couple of shout outs. That's okay with you, Ms. Hunt? Sure. Yes, go so, for it. I'm going to play Okay, all the people that work with me on my film, I just want to acknowledge you guys. I love y'all. And um, it's been a long journey. We had the pandemic. Thank God it's pretty much over with now. And now things get back together. So I just want to say some names. All my cast members that are working with us will say hello to Miss Diana Ross. And I don't mean the singer. There's a new Diana Ross coming up in Brooklyn who's a good actress. Okay, kind of remind me of Latifah. <laughs> Miss Tracy Dean, Mr. Ken Devon. Actually, I'm in a novel, Mr. Ken Devon. He had me in one of he had me a couple of novels. He had me this novel, so you'll be seeing more of that. Um JJ Matisse, um, comedian JJ Matisse, Jasmine Smith, hello. Mr. Ralph Matthews, love you, my brother. Um, Miss Nancy and um, Mr. Akinelli Stevens, Miss Brooklyn Zone, Fabricate Housing Project Zone, Miss Shawana Riles, Miss Katriana Yvonne, my good buddy I knew from the 70s, Mr. Robert Flood, also Mr. Dorian Knighton, Miss Amelia Moore, and also UBC TV CEO, Miss Peggy Dobson. And also, Mr. Anthony Jones. And also, I got to say a special shout out to our dear friend, Miss Christine White, better known as AKA Tina from yeah. Chicken and Tina Podcast. Love you guys. Always had and always will. And just Wonderful. expect nothing but the best to come. And hello, all um, that he just shouted out. I hope to meet you all in person one day, whether virtual or actually in person. Um, I've always wanted to come to New York, which I came years and years ago. I probably was 17, um, but I haven't been to the core of New York in a long time. I think I've been to like the outskirts of uh, you haven't like, been to Brooklyn yet? I haven't That's been to Brooklyn course. since I was 17. <laughs> and so, wow. um, yeah, so uh, it's That's funny. I wanted to dollar. name um, my daughter Brooklyn. And her father was from the Bronx. <laughs> he wouldn't let me do it. <laughs> he was like, oh, okay. so, so, um, yeah. well, Brooklyn, Bronx, <laughs> and little beef, whatever. It's yeah. <laughs> but this was the, this was early 2000s, but um, I've always had a, a love for the big city. Um, I, I dance and sing and act. And so mm -hmm. theater was always my thing. And, you know, musical theater is my thing. And so I, I got to get there and get to the big theater, right? And so I can see everything live and in action. So I'm getting ready to be traveling around the world soon. So hopefully I will get to stop by and do my cameo. Again, thank you for watching or thank you for listening. Thank you for being open to receive whatever information you needed today. I hope that it was a seed to your greater. Thank you for watching Branding, Books, and Business. Let me say that again. Thank you for watching Books, Business, and Branding with Brandy Hunt. I can be found all over social media at Author Brandy Hunt and on TikTok, where all the experts are. I'm Dr. Brandy Hunt, DR for Dr. Brandy Hunt. Yes, I'm actually a doctor. And I do publish books. I do mm. writing coaching. I do all the things, anything publishing 
or writing A to Z, I will not let you get lost in the sauce because it's easy to do. And if you want to be on my next podcast, please go over to diversedestinysolutions.com. That's diverse, D-I-V-E-R-S-E, destinysolutions.com. You'll find all of my links there, publishing consultations. You'll find a link there to schedule your podcast interview, all the things that you need to get to the other side because we just want to be a bridge to your greater. Have a wonderful day. Can I say one more thing? Oh, absolutely. I forgot to mention one more name. My apostle, my pastor, my overseer, my prophet, Apostle Keith Davis. Who took Shout me out in? Apostle. Yes. Who took me in, him and his family, when I was actually homeless. Thank wow. you. That's another story I didn't get into. I was I was homeless for a while, for a number of years. And while I was homeless, through the grace of God, through him, I went to Africa. I was I was in the shelter, and when I was in the shelter, I got an opportunity to go to Africa, free of charge. Wow. I'm gonna tell you right now, we talk about we love Jesus in America. You, I'm gonna tell you right now. You don't know the, you don't know people who really love Jesus. Did you go to Africa? I had been to eight different services. Started eight o'clock in the morning before three p.m. I'm right. telling you right now. You talk about we talk about America. We got Jesus. You go to Africa. You better really have them because out there they're really serious about it, and they can tell if you real or not. Right. So I just want to give a shout out to my apostle. You know, shout out Arizona, and everything. Love you. Send him on over. Davis. So it, yes. I'm not sure if he does podcast interviews, but if he does, send him right on over. We'll be happy to let him, you he's know, actually, minister and talk and all that, all that fun stuff. He's actually looking for like a couple of worship singers for something he got coming up real big. Okay, I'm, okay. Not, I'm looking for him, you know. So if any's out there, if you want, if you need out there, hit me up and definitely. But um, yes, he's a very powerful man of God. Um, I've urged you, anybody, to um, when I invite him to come out to to, to preach and minister. I mean, this man of God, he's been to Israel a bad, he's been to Africa several times, and he's been even under the um guiding and leadership of um at once, you know, um a Mr. Um a Pastor Benny Hinn at one of his crusades. Okay, tell the people his name and where they can find um, him. Well, his name is Apostle Keith. You can find me. You get to me, I can get you to him. Apostle well, we, we're not Keith gonna do Davis. it that way. We're gonna we gonna let people go straight to the man of God because then we wanna be going through it. People like okay. the very simple ver version. Okay. So what is his name and Apostle, where can they find him on social media? On Facebook, Apostle Keith Davis. Oh, okay. I like him. And uh, where you don't have he got the little curly hair, um, little like he kind of uh about my complexion. Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah, he used to um, minister here a lot. I have to hit him up and be like, "I met one of your people." Okay, okay. Well, uh, I hope it's the same apostle. I mean, where's I'm he from? pretty sure it is. Where's he from? Um, now, where is he from? I'm not sure. I'll shoot you over a picture and I'll, you let me know if it's who it is. But um, okay. I'm pretty sure that's who it is. Right. What did yes, you say? Yes, I don't kid, remember. Yes, but we can talk okay. about that off camera. But okay. Keith, oh, yeah. Apostle but Keith Davis. Davis. And he's yes. on Facebook and he's looking yes. for worship singers and yes. you can connect with him there. Yes. And he travels all the time. You go to Africa. So if you want him to go to China anywhere, just um, connect with him there and he'll, you know, talk to you and everything. And from there, very powerful man of God. But Wonderful. that's like, that's my, that's my spiritual father. That's my second dad. Because like I said, when I was homeless, he was the only man of God that took me in. I can okay. see that. Yeah, I, I can, can see that. Well, I shout out to that. Apostle Keith Davis. We about to roll out of here before they cut okay. off um, time. And thank you again for watching and listening to Books, Branding, and Business with author Brandy Hunt. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. God bless. Bye. Love you. Too. Bye. Bye.